Good morning. Good morning. Please get your seats. Welcome to class. So we have about how many weeks until the final exam? Four weeks. So subtract one week for the holiday. So we have about three weeks. And then subtract one week for um, going into cave and not coming to class. So we have about two weeks. All right, uh, so two weeks. So what are we gonna do in these two weeks? Um, and number one, uh, we will uh, uh, finish two more homeworks, two more homeworks, uh, shorter ones, uh, clearly. Uh, uh, the first reason is that uh, this year they put up a new rule that we cannot collect homework during the last week. So we got to respect that rule. Um, and so uh, we will have uh, one homework that is uh, going to show up uh, today. And then it will, uh, I think it's going to do the day before the Thanksgiving break. So I think everyone will be gone on the Wednesday. So the homework will be due uh, on Tuesday. Okay, so the day before. So during the Thanksgiving, nowhere for me, nowhere for you. Okay. Uh, and because it is a shorter period of time, we have only three problems. Two handwritten problems and one programming problems to complete the second half of what we discussed over the past two lectures. Okay, so that would be the uh, assignment for uh, this week. And then um, uh, during the Thanksgiving, of course, no work for you. And then after the Thanksgiving uh, break, we will have one more homework that will cover uh, a few uh, topics on random processes. Okay, and then you will have about one week to study for the final exam. So that's the plan. And uh, what we want to do today is to talk about the table shown on the screen, right? Okay, your right hand side. Now, this is a table uh, that you see in all your exams, and you may wonder so far, we have been only using this portion. And then I never really need to use this portion because I sort of really need to memorize them already. And since, since you never test me on deriving these uh, equations, I don't need them anymore. And so what the heck are they, all these formulas, <laughs> right? Okay, so we are gonna use um, quite a bit of things starting from this lecture um, on this side. So you can see there's a lot of um, MX uh, functions. And there is your favorite Fourier transform table. Ah, people are smiling. That means you hate it, which is good. OK, so we're going we're gonna to do some work over here. Now, um, you may wonder, then why, why do we want to study all these? Right? It is a um, probability class. Uh, why do we need to do all these? So to motivate uh, this discussion, let me just ask you, do you like the last problem in your midterm? where you have two random variables, you need to sum them, and then you need to derive the convolution equation, and then you mess up with the lower limit and then the upper limit, and then after that you plug in the function, and then you mess up the range, and then you get the wrong answer. Do you, do you like that? No, okay, maybe except one, <laughs> except will. Okay, so I don't like that either, but that is hope, right? The hope, um, uh, if you've taken 3 or 1, you know that there's a hope. The hope is that any convolution is multiplication in the Fourier space. Okay, so this is a big slogan. If you have taken 3 or 1 and you cannot remember the slogan, you've got to retake it. Okay, any convolution is multiplication in the Fourier space. Okay, so this is important. So uh, as you would imagine, what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to look at uh, some of two random variables, and then we're going to do things in the Fourier space. Okay? We're going to convert your probability density function, the subject of the convolution. We're going to take those um, uh, functions, probability density functions or mass functions, turn it into the equivalent form of the Fourier transform. You do the multiplication over there, come back, okay? We're gonna do that. Um, then so what, okay? It's just another mathematical trick. So what, why do we wanna spend time on dealing with this? Um, now, the most important uh, spirit of a 302 course is 
you have a lot a lot of random variables you want to sum them together you want to look at the average you want to look at the sample average and whenever you want to look at the sample average think about what is sample average you have a lot of numbers you sum them up okay so each if each number is a random variable you, you're summing multiple random variables and how are you going to do this convolution infinitely many times okay it's just not fun and not only not fun, it's just impossible to do this kind of convolution infinitely many times. But if I say that, look, we have a tool, we can turn it into the Fourier space, we do multiplication in the Fourier space, then the analysis becomes a lot easier. This is also the tool that many people are using to derive the central limit theorem. Okay? Not, the, not the full proof, but sort of giving you the idea of why central limit theorem holds. So we're going to talk about that. Now that is very important because central limit theorem tells you if I have a lot of distributions, regardless if they are uniform or the exponential or Bernoulli or whatever, if you sum them up, they will become Gaussian. Very powerful result. Okay? Uh, and this is sort of the, the, the basis uh, for a lot of things that you, you may not like. P-test, T-test, X-test, Z-test, Y-test, A, B, C, D, E, F, G test. Okay? All these kind of tests. Uh, it's based on the Gaussian assumptions, uh, and, so, and so if you know where the sample mean comes from, you'll be able to analyze those problems. Right? So, so this is really an important milestone uh, in statistics. Okay, so going back to here, uh, let's talk about this concept. Moment generating function, and uh, there is one more. It's called the uh, characteristic function. Okay? Moment generating function and characteristic function. Uh, they're sort of... Um, a twin of each other, okay? Uh, so we're gonna look at them together. Um, <clears throat> so the moment generating function, if you want to call it, it is the Laplace transform. Uh, this is the Fourier transform. Laplace transform, Fourier transform, okay? So let's talk about the moment generating function. <clears throat> let's define it. The moment generating function of a random variable x is the expected value of e to the power s x. Okay, this is, this makes no sense at all. Okay, just look at this equation. Um, the moment generating function is defined in this way. I have no idea why we want to define it this way, right? So, you have a random variable, you tell me a random variable, okay, you tell me a random variable, and then there's a mapping, there's a mapping called g, uh, that's g, uh, we'll take your, your, your x, it's just e as uh, something, okay? You, that's a mapping called g. You give me the random variable x, I apply this function to g, I got this result, it's called the e as of x. Functional mapping, okay? So I'll take this mapping, uh, you wonder what is s? s just, is just a number, okay? s is just a number. So think about the Fourier transform, you have you have the time in the input, and then you have the frequency is the output, so the s would be the frequency. So, so that's the, the, uh, the variable in the other space. All right, so you have this x, you take this um, um, and transformation, and then you take the expected value of this transformation. Uh, it doesn't really make sense at all. <laughs> Why? Why? Why in this earth I want to take the... Why on this earth I want to take... The, the random variable, take e to the power s times x. Why don't we just take cosine of x? Why don't we take sine of x? Why don't we take log of x? Why do we choose to take exponential of s times x? And then afterwards, why do we want to take the expected value of this ugly transformed variable? Okay, what does it bite us? Okay, so before I answer this question, let me ask you to test you whether you really understand chapter three and four. Okay, are you ready? Okay, so expect value of E S X. What is it? What is it? Yes. Uh huh. So fx dx minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so he can graduate. Okay, so so this is the thing. 
This is the equation for this expectation. Expectation, uh, when you apply the expected value to whatever function, no transform, is going to give you the integration of this gx times your distribution fx from minus infinity to infinity. I'm just replacing the g by this e to the power sx. Okay, so life is good. Now, let's look at this equation. What is so special about this equation? Well, this equation doesn't really look familiar, but let me write it in this way. So let's write this integration, and then there is a function called fx, e, s, x, dx. What have you done? Oh, I just flipped the order, okay? Now that should look a little bit familiar. If this still doesn't look familiar, let me, let me, let me, let me um, define in this way. Let me define this s equals to j omega, uh, minus j omega, okay? Okay, so j omega x dx. Does it look familiar? It makes sense now, okay? This is your favorite and the most uninteresting Fourier transform. Okay, so this is a Fourier transform. This is a Fourier transform of what? This is a Fourier transform of your fx. That explains why we want to put this transformation in the beginning. Why do we want to put this functional transform? e to the power sx. Because if you want to do the Fourier transform, it will be e to the power minus j omega x. This is what you want. And therefore, this is what we put in reverse engineering approach. Now, clearly, uh, this is a special case of that. There's a s, this is s equals to j omega, okay? Um, so uh, we have two names. This is called a moment generating function. This is called a characteristic function. So characteristic function is a special case of the moment generating function where you restrict, where you restrict yourself um, your, your s to be minus j omega. Now we can comment more on that. Why do we want to uh, do things in different ways? But you can at least see the point of doing this transformation and then take the expectation. If you do not take the expectation, you do not have this integration. You do not have this multipl multiplication of your distribution and also this transform the variable. So you need to have this expectation. You need to have this exponential function because then you can, you can do this uh, transformation appropriately. So you need both, okay? And this is the definition of the MGF, the definition of the characteristic function. Okay, so we can dismiss now because done, right? And it's just the definition, and then now if I tell you a random variable, just plug it in and then do this calculation. So, and then you have the table, so I think we can dismiss now. Now clearly not, right? Because then you will complain, you pay so much tuition and I'm not teaching you examples. So let's do the examples. Uh, so example number one, you have uh, a random variable with three states, uh, 0, 1, and 2, and then they have the probability mass of uh, 2, 6, 3, 6, and 1, 6. Uh, it's not an even distribution, but they have, uh, there's three states. Okay. I want to find the moment generating function. I want to find the moment generating function. The moment generating function has a symbol, m, uh, x, of s, it is the moment generating function for the random variable x. Uh, the variable would be s because this is your output. The definition of this uh, moment generating function is expected value of e to the power s times x. Okay, so this is definition. Now let's look at this example. Very easy example. How do we derive the formula for this? Hmm. Integration, e s x f x d x. Correct. Okay. Wait a minute. This is discrete random variable. So how should we do? Huh? Well, do you want to say something? Uh huh. Okay, okay, great, all right? So whenever you see the continuous random variable, you write the integration. Whenever you see the discrete random variable, you write the summation. 
write the summation, okay? So you have e to the power s x times your, your f x, and then just sum over the x. And just let's write them out what they are. So it will be some, uh, it will be three terms, right? So the first term will be e to the power s times zero. The second term is e to the power s, s one, and then e to the power s times two. And now what are the probabilities? The probabilities will be uh, times two over six, times three over six, times one over six. Add them up, and you get this expected value of this random variable. Okay, very easy. So just look at this uh, uh, state and then the PDF. So sum them and, uh, and multiply them. So you have the answer. So this is one third plus one half e to the power s plus one six e to the power two s. This is the moment generating function for this random variable. Did I do it right? Okay, I did it right. So that's good. Now let's do another example. In this example, I have a Poisson random variable. Okay, a Poisson random variable. So uh, without doing anything, you can go to the table here. Uh, so where's the Poisson distribution? So this is the Poisson distribution. You have this formula. This is the PDF. And you have the mean, you have the variance. Now I want to find the moment generating function. It's given by this super ugly formula. So let's just derive it. Okay, let's just derive it. You have a Poisson random variable, uh, so you want to find expected value of e to the power s x. And this is e to the power s of, let me just write a k, times, uh, well that should be the summation, k has to go from 0 to infinity. And then the PDF of uh, Poisson is um, lambda to the power k, uh, e to the power minus lambda, divided by k factorial. Uh, this is your f of x, okay? And this is your e to the power s x. And this is really like a summation, uh, integration. And that's a dx. Okay? So it's the same thing. Now, let's look at the summation. This is an uh, in, uh, infinite series, uh, but let's don't worry because you have this e to the power s, and there's a lambda, and they share the same k. So you have e to the power s times lambda to the power k, and then e minus lambda uh, divide by uh, uh, k factorial. Okay. So how should we do? <clears throat> Am I right? I think I'm right. What should we do now? Uh, get stuck, right? No, 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 no. So you can pull out the e to the power minus lambda, and then you have the summation, k going from 0 to infinity. You have, now, OK, so here's a beauty. Do you like this lambda times e to the power s? No, you don't like it. OK, I don't like it either, so I would just draw an apple. OK. So you have what? You have something times the infinite series of an apple to the power k divided by k factorial. OK, so now is the time to look at this formula again. So let's look at the useful identity number three. OK, useful identity number three. Let me, let me zoom it in. Is it big enough? See that? Okay, so if you do not like x, put an apple over there. So what do you get? You get e to the power apple. Okay, all right, so this is e to the power apple. That means this is e to the power minus lambda times e to the power, what is apple? Lambda e s. So let's group the term together. So e to the power lambda of e to the power s minus one. And life is, of course, very good. So you got it. Okay, so this is a formula. 
This is the moment generating function. Let me see, do I have, okay. So this is another example, I think I will skip this example. Um, you, can, you can read the book to find out. So, now, have you ever wondered this question? Why is it called the moment generating function? Okay, let's look at the name. Moment generating function. It is a function, but where does this moment come from? Where does this generating function, generation come from? It got to generate the moment. Can it generate the moment? Yes, otherwise we wouldn't call it the moment generating function. You can generate the moment from the moment generating function. And how do we generate the moment? You generate the moment by taking the derivative. By taking the derivative. Um, so, here's the deal. If you want to get expected value of x1, okay, you take the derivative uh, with respect to s of your moment generating function. You want to get the expected value of x squared, you take the derivative twice of your moment generating function. You want to get the expected value of x to the power 3, you take the third derivative of your moment generating function. That's why it is called the, the moment generating function, because you can get the moment from the moment generating function. That's one little thing I need to um, comment on, is that when you take the derivative of this thing, uh, it will still be a function of s. Okay, so we get something as a function of s, and so you want to restrict yourself to s equals to zero. So after you have taken the derivative, set the s to zero, then you can uh, get these moments. And the proof is actually uh, fairly straightforward. Um, <coughs> So it, uh, it's just here, okay? Let's just look at this one. So if you want to, uh, b b b let's just do the one time, okay? So let's say I want to find the expected value of x, okay? And my claim is that it is equal to d ds of, um, of your moment generating function mx of s, okay? Restrict yourself to s equals to zero. Let me just illustrate this point. Then you can uh, do the second order derivative and so on. Okay, so what is this? Uh, this is the dds of your expected value of e to the power sx. Okay, now uh, the e to the sx, when you take the expectation, this is the integration. And then you have e sx, and then you have fx dx. Uh, since we are not a math major, we can of course swap the order of integration and derivative. Uh, if you're a math major, then your professor will yell at you. They will ask you to prove 10 more lines of equations before they allow you to do that, but I'm not. And that's why I choose engineering over math. Okay, so you have this. <coughs> okay, so now you see what do you have? You have this derivative with respect to s. And this fx has nothing to do with your s. So what it means is that you can just look at this creature. And this creature will give you x e to the power sx. Where does this x come from? Well, because if you have a exponential function of a times um, s, you take derivative with respect to s, this a will come down. Okay, in my case, uh, my, my a is just the, the, the x, and so the x will come down. And so uh, this will give you uh, this integration and the fx dx. Okay, so you have one x here. But don't forget that you want to restrict yourself to s equals to zero. So s equals to zero. So s equals to zero means what? It means that your e to the power sx will become one because your s is zero. 
And so what you will have left is the integration of x times your density function. This is just the expected value of x. So I proved that if I take the derivative of the movement generating function once, set s to 0, I can get the first movement. You can repeat this argument over and over, then you will be able to get to, the, to any order uh, moment. So go to any k, and the argument goes as follows. So you can get, moment gen you can get moments from moment generating function. Uh, and what else can you get? Well, you get uh, this Fourier transform, Laplace transform property. Uh, that will become extremely useful when you uh, look at um, uh, some of random variables. <coughs> so here is the table. This table is the same as the one that I'm showing you on the screen. Uh, so you will get this table uh, during the exam. Now let's talk about independent random variables. In this case, I have two random variables, x and y. I define z equals to x plus y. And we know that uh, in, the, in the bad days, uh, if, we if I want to find f z of z, this has to be the convolution uh, of uh, f x and f y. And this is not fun. We know that. And so with the moment generating function, we can actually simplify this calculation significantly, okay? Because we know that convolution is multiplication in, in, the, uh, in the Fourier space. Um, so this theorem says that if you have two random variables, x and y, you define z as x plus y, then the moment generating function of z will be the product of these two individual moment generating functions. It's fairly easy to prove without using the slogan. Uh, the moment generating function of z is the expected value of e to the power s of x plus y. Okay, it's just x plus y. And very important message is that they're independent. And by independence, I mean that the two can be separated. So here, what you have is e to the power x times e to the power uh, y. And since they're independent, they will just become e to the power sx times e to the power esy. This is independent. Independence. Okay, if they're not independent, then sorry, you cannot factorize them. But since they're independent, you can do that. And now, what is this? This is just mx of s. This is my of s. So I have written the moment generating function for z as a product of these two individual moment generating functions. What is the implication? Well, the implication is that we can solve many bizarre problems now. <clears throat> we can come back to this point later, or may not be needed. <clears throat> um, let me see if I have any interesting problem. Um, nope. Okay, so I will, I will write one down. Um, what is the distribution that we always ask? I think we always ask about... Um, let's do Gaussian, okay? Let's just do Gaussian. Let's do Gaussian. Um, so, so suppose, this is my example. Example, you have x. It's a Gaussian. Um, give me a mean. Uh, mu 1, sigma 1 square. And then I have a Gaussian. Uh, mu 2, sigma 2 square. Okay? Uh, I let z equals to x plus y. I, I ask, can you find me the PDF of, um, of z? Now, uh, to solve this problem, uh, and now that you know there's a tool in the moment generating function, okay? So what we can do is that we can start with mx of s and then my of s. What is mx of s? Well, you can look at this table. Gaussian, uh, the moment generating function is this, okay? It's this equation here. So I can have uh, e to the power mu1s plus 
sigma 1 square s divided by 2. The other one is e to the power mu 2 s plus sigma 2 square uh, s squared divided by 2. So this is moment generating function 1, moment generating function 2. I know that my z is uh, mx of s times my of s. And so I can just multiply these two functions together. So you will have e, uh, it will just become very big, uh, mu1 plus mu2 of s plus sigma1 squared plus sigma2 squared of s squared divided by 2. Okay, I'm, I'm already doing this multiplication and then turn it into addition. Do you guys follow me? Is it okay? All right. So, uh, so this is the moment generating function of z. Then I ask, what is the PDF of z? What is the PDF of z? Now, if, you, if I give you the PDF, you can, you can calculate the moment generating function. This is the forward transform. Of course, you can take the inverse transform and go back. Now, how do you take the inverse transform and go back? Just look at the table. Okay, here's how we do things. If I tell you this, okay, you can get to here. Then if I tell you this, then of course you can go back to there. Okay? So let's look at this formula. Let's look at this equation here. Which one is the closest to this list of moment generating functions? The Gaussian itself, isn't it? It's really the Gaussian itself. Um, so, um, what kind of fruit do you want? Not, not apple anymore. How about orange? Okay, orange and banana. Okay, banana is easier to draw. Okay, so here is what? Here is e to the power um, an orange times s plus a banana times s squared divided by 2. You see that? Okay. So this is, this is what? Now, if you don't like this, you can put a square, banana square. This is, this is the moment generating function for the Gaussian with a new mean and a new variance. So I can easily tell you that uh, this z will be Gaussian. Okay, what is the orange? The orange is uh, mu1 plus mu2. Uh, what is the variance? The variance will be sigma1 squared times sigma2, uh, plus sigma2 squared. This is your new Gaussian. So if you want to write down the formula, just, it will just be, oh, 1 over square root of 2 pi, blah, 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 blah. And then just be a bunch of things. Okay, so, but th this is the PDF. A lot easier than doing convolution. Now, convolution is not fun. Okay, you know, Gaussian converting with another Gaussian, I don't know how to do it. Uh, okay, so this is one example. Um, happy? Okay. So here is another example. You have a sum of Bernoulli. You can show that it is a binomial, something that we claimed before. Uh, and then the proof goes as follows. Um, you look at the Bernoulli distribution, right? So you have this. Oh, here, here the different thing is that previously we only have two random variables, but now we have n random variables. So you have n of these random variables. You let z equals to x1 plus dot 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 plus xn. And so the moment generating function of z, it will just be the moment generating function of x1 times the moment generating function of x2 times the moment generating function of xn. Just a chain of these products. Each, of one, each one of those is a Bernoulli random variable. So I go to this formula, the first one. Okay, this is the moment generating function for a Bernoulli. I write it down. It will be 1 minus p plus p times e to the power s. This is the Bernoulli moment generating function. And then I do it again. 1 minus p plus p e to the power s for the second one. And then dot, dot, dot. And then 1 minus p plus p e to the power s for the last one. This is the moment generating function for z. 
And now when you have this chain of terms multiplied together, and they are identical, and so you will have 1 minus p plus p times e to the power s to the power n. What is the PDF for z? You go to this table again, you look for the nearest neighbor, this one. This is the nearest neighbor. You go all the way to the left-hand side, eh, binomial. Okay? So you say that z is binomial of n terms, and then um, there is a probability p. Or if you want to be more precise, you say that uh, p of z of k is uh, this, uh, n choose k, uh, p to the power k, 1 minus p to the power n minus k. This is the PMF of the uh, random variable. Okay, so you go to the right-hand side to do calculation and come back and then get the result. So this is the um, Bernoulli, sum of Bernoulli equals to binomial. Uh, so here is the typed proof. Oh, in fact, I have this, this Gaussian here. Right? So if you have um, uh, n Gaussians, you sum together, you just get a new Gaussian. OK, so um, if you read the textbook, I believe I have a table. I don't have it uh, on, on the set of slides. But if you read the textbook, there is a table. I put the table in. The table will contain uh, the common um, uh, um, random variables and then the sum. So if I recall, the table will have um, uh, x is what, y is what, and then, and then x plus y is what. I, I think I have a table like this. So if you have the um, binomial, binomial, you have something else. You have um, Bernoulli, Bernoulli. When you add them up, it becomes binomial. Some, uh, a table like this, you can check the textbook. So that would be very useful. Uh, some useful results include um, the two most useful things are, um, let me see, uh, sum, of, sum of two Gaussians uh, remains a Gaussian. The difference of two Gaussians remains a Gaussian. Okay, this is useful because when you uh, do image processing, so if you have two images, you, you add them, you subtract them, the, the noise statistics doesn't change. So that's, that's one, one key message. Um, uh, the sum of two Poisson is Poisson. Again, this is really for my own interest. I do, I do image processing, so I do Poisson. Sum of two Poisson is still Poisson. The difference of two Poisson is some bizarre distribution called a scale line distribution. So that you don't have to know. Uh, until you do wave flow transform, that, that kind of things, then you need to lo learn it. Um, so, so the sum of two Poisson is Poisson. The difference of two Poisson is something else. Okay, so these are the two uh, really important results. Uh, then sum of exponential, I forget what it is called. There, there, there's, there's a name. Uh, sum of um, uniform, two uniform becomes a triangle. Multiple uniform eventually becomes a Gaussian. Okay. So some of these results are useful. Okay, so this is the moment generating function. And as I said, there's a twin. It's called the uh, characteristic function. Uh, you, I, I put them into two separate uh, set of slides, but they're e essentially the same thing. So I will just uh, talk about it. The characteristic function uh, is the special case. Uh, so now moment generating function uh, is the expected value of e to the power s x. The characteristic function has a different symbol. It's called a phi x. Uh, the, the variable is omega. So this is expected value of e j omega. <clears throat> okay, so this is the definition of the characteristic function. So what it means is that you, you define s equals to j omega. Okay, so that is the definition of characteristic function. The reason of introducing the characteristic function is that um, you want to use this Fourier table. Fourier table is a lot more detailed than your well, moment generating function table. Um, now, there, there are two things I want to comment on before we go into examples. Number one, this is the correct definition of a, of a characteristic function. This is the correct definition. If you read any textbook 
they will define the characteristic function in this way, except my book. Okay, why? Not because I don't know, okay? It's because if we do it in this way, then your integration will be e to the power j omega and then f x and then dx. Okay? If you follow the correct definition. But if you, if you grew up with Oppenheim and Wilski, the signal and system textbook that you always use, okay, there's a minus. So this is, this is the open hand Wilski definition of a Fourier transform. Okay, there's a minus. Does it matter? It doesn't matter mathematically. It, as long as you're consistent with all your, all your formula, uh, you always put a minus or you don't never put a minus, it's okay. Mathematically, the same thing because uh, here you define S equals to J omega uh, or you define it S equals to minus J omega, they're still along the imaginary axis. It doesn't matter whether you're looking at the negative side or the positive side. And omega um, spans from minus infinity to infinity, it's just a mirror. So it doesn't really matter mathematically, as long as you're consistent. This is the key. Okay, so now what will happen if I define the woman generated function in this way? Mathematically, that's no problem. But then every semester you will mess up. Why? Because the Fourier table is defined for this thing. And then you always forget to put a minus sign on the results here. See my point? Because if you do the Fourier transform of something, it's going to give you a formula that is for this definition. And then if I define the characteristic function with an opposite sign, then you need to do this conversion in your brain to the formula, and then you flip the formula. Okay, whenever you see j omega, you make it into minus j omega. And this kind of thing, I tried multiple years. It never worked. To a point I decided to just define my own version so that you would never make the mistake. <laughs> okay? So, so here's a remark that the correct definition is going with a plus, but for the ease of going back and forth between formulas, I put a minus. Okay, so this is, this is the correct way of doing things. This is my way of defining things. You guys follow? Okay? Okay. So when you go out, don't tell people that we learn it in this way. We, we learn it in this way, just because to make it consistent with the table so you don't make mistakes in your exams. So we define it in this way. Okay, so that's the first comment. Now, what is the second comment? The second comment is that, um, why do we need to use the characteristic function and not always use the movement generating function? The reason is that there are random variables where the characteristic function is defined, but the movement generating function is not defined. The reason is that the movement generating function is the Laplace transform, so that covers the entire left or the right half space. I forget which, which side. Okay? It covers the entire half space. The characteristic function is restricting yourself to the imaginary axis. So one can potentially blow up. The other one will never blow up. So that's the reason that we want to uh, look at the characteristic function. And in fact, for most of the um, papers and books, uh, when they do things, they prefer to go with the characteristic functions because mathematicians, they don't want to worry about oh, whether it will blow up or not. OK, so what is the um, key message here? The key message is that we are going to define the moment generating function in this way. Um, and so you can look at, you can use the Fourier transform directly without worrying about those uh, flipping the signs. Okay? You do not need to do the sign conversion when you look at the table that we give here. Um, so let's see if we can do one example. Uh, okay, this one will be. This one would be good. Okay, so this one would be good. You have two random variables. They are exponential. Okay, exponential random variables. Uh, the two PDFs are given. And I want to find a z 
equals to x plus y. And if you want to go back to the good old days of convolution, go ahead, uh, enjoy it, you have some fun. And indeed, I think we have done it before. Okay, it's just not very interesting. So how can we solve this problem using the characteristic function or the moment generating function? Uh, it's the following. Um, you look at this function, uh, in this case, uh, let's do the uh, characteristic function. So I define uh, f f um, the characteristic function. This is the Fourier transform, okay? Fourier transform of uh, this uh, exponential function. So let's look at the formula. Fourier table, which one will work for my problem? The nearest neighbor. Which one? The fifth one? No, the fifth one has a T. The first one, okay, the first one. There's an A, the A is a uh, constant. The A in the formula is my lambda, okay? The A in the formula is my lambda. I am not there yet, right? Uh, because E minus lambda X, that's a ut, ut means that it's a step function, right? So it is, uh, it is one after, after your zero. So e to the power x, if I take the Fourier transform, that can give me one over lambda plus j omega. But now I have a lambda here, so what should I do? Or well, just put a lambda here. Okay. So the characteristic function for this random variable is lambda divided by lambda plus j omega. Oh, that's easy. How about the moment at uh, the characteristic function for y? It will be lambda divided by lambda plus j omega. Is it the same? Yeah, it's the same because the y is just a dummy variable. Okay? It, it, you, you look at the formula, it's the same thing. So the characteristic function for x, characteristic function for y. So what is the characteristic function for z? Well, the characteristic function for z would just be lambda plus, uh, divided by lambda plus j omega times lambda divided by lambda plus j omega. So that would give me lambda squared divided by lambda plus j omega squared. Okay. So what is the PDF of z? We need to look at the table again. The nearest neighbor is number five. Okay, I hear that, number five. So number five says that if I have one over lambda plus j omega square, I will get uh, z times e minus lambda z. Okay, I'm using a z because I, this, the random variable is, uh, is z. Okay, so this is a z. Uh, what else? Well, I, I'm not at a, a, a one, right? I'm at lambda square, so put a lambda square here. So that means I just put a lambda square over there. And this is fz of z. Uh, don't forget, you have a u of z, so that means that the z is bigger than zero, and zero when z is less than zero. So you're fine the PDF of Z. Well, this is really nice because previously we need to have the entire problem for with multiple steps with all the limits, upper limits, lower limits, integration here and there and to find out this result. And now it's just boom, boom, really two lines. Okay. okay, so I hope you will enjoy this process a little bit and then when we come back uh, next week, I'm going to show you more examples so you can uh, work on the homework problems. Okay, so I'll see you next time. <clears throat>